an ever-changing world, Life Changes Network presents a voice of truth and inspiration, broadcasting on frequencies of love, laughter, and information, illuminating new paths for new directions as we, as one, strive for higher and higher planes of existence and a better understanding of ourselves and the world in which we live. Always remembering, Life Changes. This is radio like you've never felt before. This is Life Changes with Filippo. And now your host, our MC, the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Ciao, everyone. Happy New Year. I know I said that last week, but I really feel like this is, it's still new. It is, it is so still new. As a matter of fact, we have our first full moon coming up here uh, tonight. And, and because of that, I just feel like there's such a newness in the air. And it's so fitting that as we are still celebrating, in my opinion, our new year here, that we have our guest on tonight that we do, who is Jonas Elrod, who if you don't know about him or his film, you're certainly going to find out tonight. And you're certainly going to want to go out and, and learn more about it and see it for yourself. Um, he's... Um, He's a documentary filmmaker, and, and th- this is a story, uh, the film, Wake Up, a story about how he suddenly one day began seeing and hearing demons, angels, auras, ghosts, and other things all around him. Uh, and it's interesting because I have personally had, um, I'm not going to say aversion, it's a word that I think uh, Jonas uses in the film, which I thought was really appropriate. Um, I... I I, I, Dorothy Donahue, our producer, who met uh, Jonas and, and saw the film, and uh, it, it came to me and said, "You, you got to see this film. You, you got to, you got to um, uh, have him on the show." And I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And it sounded interesting, and and something about it just said no to me. Um, and and so when it came up again, something about it just said no. And and finally, and I was holding the film one day, and I'm thinking, what is it about this that I am am not watching this? I know I want to. What is it that makes me not do it? And it's interesting because the film is called Wake Up, and I, I certainly resonated when I finally sat down and watched it. I, I was riveted um, because. I was watching, in a sense, somewhat my story. And I'm sure, as Jonas says in the film, the story of many people as they wake up on, on whatever level that is and, and in whatever time and, and in whatever form or fashion. In, in, in one of my experiences, for example, years ago, and, and it's no coincidence that it was Dorothy that ushered in that experience as an awakener and an accelerator that she is, uh, and an activator. Um, when I first met her, she invited me to her house. And after a really wonderful time and chat together, I, I had so many questions for her as I was exploring this new world. Um, uh, she said to me, wait, there is something here that you left the last time you were here. Now, I had been there once before, and I knew for a fact that I had not left anything behind because I did not, had not walked in with anything to leave behind. But she says, they tell me that there is something here that I'm supposed to give you, that I was supposed to give you last time, but you left before I could give to you. And I thought, okay, what could that possibly be? And in front of her, she had this big table, a uh, coffee table full of crystals and stones and rocks and all kinds of, of beautiful things. But she dug around in there, and then she said, close your eyes. And I thought, why? And she says, just close your eyes. They are telling me to tell you. And, and, and so you know, there was nobody else in the room or in her place except for a cat. Um, so they, she was referring to beings of some sort. They were telling me, are telling me um, to have you close your eyes. And so I, it's fine. I closed my eyes and she said, now open up your hand. And I thought, okay. And I, I opened up my hand and she put in my hand an object. And as soon as she put that object in my hand, I said to her out loud, wow. 
lapis lazuli. Um, and I'm getting a little emotional, which is really interesting because as I watched Jonas in the film, I thought, yeah, I know that feeling. I know that feeling. And I'm sure many of you listening uh, now do too. Um, I had never seen uh, lapis lazuli. Um, I, I had seen it in a very small piece polished on a ring that I had, which looked nothing like it in, in its natural form and felt nothing like it. I'd never felt it because all I felt was the polish in the ring, um, uh, in the setting in the ring. So how I knew this was lapis lazuli, even if I had tried to cheat with my eyes open, I, I, I would have never known. And she said, now, before you guess, hold on. Um, um, if you knew what it was, what color would it be? And I said, it's blue. Annoyedly, like, of course it's blue. It's lapis lazuli. And she was a little flustered, I could tell. Like, she didn't expect me to, to do that. And, of course, I didn't know what was going on. And then she went on to say, okay, and if you knew what stone... And I interrupted her again, annoyedly, saying, it's lapis lazuli. Like, I knew this as if I, I, I knew my own hand. And she said, okay, open your eyes. And I looked at the, the, the stone when I opened my eyes, and I did not recognize it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you what it was, but I knew exactly but it was lapis lazuli, but I'd never seen it. Um, and she said, how did you do that? And I said, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. So I was ready to leave at that point. I was ready to leave before that point. But she said, well, ho hold on. There's something else they're telling me to, to give you. And this process that started at that point continued for the next three or so hours. I was exhausted. I was scared. I was confused. Um, though I didn't know the names of all the crystals that she eventually put into my hand with my eyes closed. I knew the color. I knew whether they were, were opaque or not. And I could distinguish from crystals that she had put in my hand um, moments before and I could distinguish between two exactly circular uh, uh, balls of crystals that were exactly the same. And I could tell exactly which one was which every time she tried to mix them up into my hand. And they had markings on them that she was able to know for sure that I knew what I was saying with my eyes closed. Um, uh, I... I this was not a happy time for me. Um, I had never known anybody that could do it. I didn't know that I could do it. And I didn't, I didn't want to be wrong yet. I didn't want to be right. And as I think about it, I still have issues with that. And so many other experiences happened after that one. And it's interesting that I have kind of, in a sense, put them in the drawer. Um, until I watch the movie. And then I had to say, well, okay, they got to come out. They got to come out. Um, I got to wake up. And so the movie Wake Up is, is not just a wake up for Jonas, as he says in the movie. Um, it was a wake up for me, and I, I'm so grateful for him making the film. I can't wait to talk to him about his process. And as we process this together, as we help us all process this together on our way to all of us, or as many of us as possible, waking up this new year of 2012. We'll do that as soon as we come back with Jonas Elrod in the movie Wake Up right after this. Clean water is not enough. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, and most bottled waters are devoid of naturally occurring minerals. They are acidic, unstructured, and hard to absorb and rob minerals from the body. Ion Ways ionizers produce a super abundant supply of powerful antioxidants in each glass. Ionized water has a reduced molecular cluster size and a negative charge, hydrating you up to six times better. Water from an Ion Ways ionizer will help you restore your body to its natural pH balance, boosting your vitality. And ionized water more effectively flushes acidic toxins from within your body. 
Drink the healthiest water available today. Ionways Water Systems, their water changes everything. To learn more about Ionways Water Systems and how you can own one today, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Well, I am Filippo, and our guest today is Jonas Elrod, and uh, he is a Brooklyn-based filmmaker whose provocative documentary uh, film, Wake Up, tells the true story of how he one day suddenly began seeing and hearing angels, demons, auras, and ghosts all around him. Perplexed by his new ability to experience the supernatural, he sets out on a soul-seeking journey to find answers to his mystifying predicament. From physicians, religious teachers, scientists to mystics, spiritual healers, and more, he humbly inquires, why me? And Wake Up, the film, made its world television debut on Oprah's own network. Um, it launched on uh, Soul, uh, Super Soul Sunday on October 16th of uh, this past year. Um, so it's been uh, screening uh, nationwide to positive audience response and great acclaim. We are happy to have Jonas Elrod on the show. Welcome, Jonas. Hey, thanks so much for having me on. Jonas, I feel you, brother. <laughs> and I, I liked your story at the top. I totally know where you're coming from with that. I, I watched you go through your process, and I thought, boy, I wish I could make this easier for him. And then I thought, well, what about me? I'm still struggling with this. Where are you now? Well, actually, before, where are you now? For those who haven't had the privilege yet of watching this and knowing the story, could you just give a little bit of the preface here? Well, I mean, I spent years documenting my own journey with, asking all these big questions that normally don't come up until, you know, real tragedy strikes. So people don't really start, you know, when things are great, people don't sit around the house and ask, well, who am I? What is God? What is the man in this reality? Uh, so I kind of had the dubious honor to really kind of be thrown into asking those questions when these um, sensitivities opened up overnight. And that was seeing, hearing, and feeling spirits and entities and whatnot and having these wild precog experiences you know, the things that you just talked about at the top of the hour, that was very foreign and very nerve-wracking to me at times. And other times it was elation and uh, a real positive thing. But it definitely took a while to find balance with that and come to understanding and really come to this in a more peaceful way. Um, it truly didn't happen overnight. So every now and then I'll have moments where I kind of like, you know, I'm not really sure I want anything to deal with this. But for the most part, um, I feel like I've integrated it fairly well. Uh, and so kind of just trucking along. So in the film, you talk about a, a stream of light coming through a, a wall. And, and was that, I'm assuming that was the, the first time you're, you're like, you really got to face it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I was working on the first, my first documentary and the night before the big shoot is when quote unquote, the veil dropped and I started seeing and hearing all these different spirits and entities and, to be real honest, I don't even know how open I would have been to hearing a story, much less experiencing it. So it, it definitely came as a shock. And I've had this um, ability ever since. Uh, and in the beginning, I certainly would have called it a, a gift curse. And now I, I certainly feel gifted by it. But like I said, that certainly didn't happen overnight. You, you know, um we we mentioned how you were hearing and seeing angels, demons, auras, and all that. Uh, how, how, what can you explain for those who, uh, again, still don't know or, or still don't understand what how that manifests? Absolutely. I mean, I kind of have slight reservations about saying angels and demons because of the affiliation with organized religion. In my perception, and it happened a few times in the beginning, a handful of times throughout the years. I've seen things that, you know, maybe I should call it light and dark and a bunch of stuff in between that, you know, to this day, I'm still not sure what I've experienced, but for whatever reason, I have peace around that. I was really struggling and working hard to crack the Da Vinci code, so to speak, 
<laughs> it was also, to be real frank, you know, it, other times it was really um, life affirming, and other times it was a colossal pain in the ass. You, you know, when I hear people talk about this, I don't ever hear about the, well, there's a real responsibility around this, and it's, you know, it's not always pixies and unicorns and fairy dust. I mean, there's definitely a responsible approach that needs to be taken with us. Um, and so I kind of got the, I had the privilege to kind of learn this on a fast track and really try to uh, work out internal stuff in, within myself and change my outer experience. But, you know, people are always really intrigued by the whole scene thing. I mean, it doesn't look like it looks in a Scooby-Doo episode or in movies. For me, it's just... Sometimes I'll see silhouettes of uh, people. Sometimes it'll be uh, masses of energy. And sometimes, and this is only occasional, it'll look like a person. And like I said, when this opened up six, seven, eight years ago, you know, that came quite as a shock. And so I decided to start taping these experiences. And then we got a, a crew together. And, you know, Mara calls this my girlfriend, who's a skeptic in the film, the Dr. House episode or portion of Wake Up, where... I get a psychological evaluation. I get an MRI to make sure there's nothing wrong in my brain or synapses are firing incorrectly. And when I got a clean bill of health is when I was forced to look at other avenues. And that was the mystical avenue for me and also a scientific avenue. What we found really amazing with all these people we spoke to is a lot of the scientists and a lot of the mystics are kind of saying the same thing. So <laughs> it definitely brought a lot of peace to that. Not to mention, we met many, many people like yourself, like myself, that were kind of just average, everyday people that would start to have experiences. You know, people call them spontaneous awakenings. So there'd be a housewife in the Midwest going to, to pick up their kids from soccer practice, and they would have a moment that really shifted their perspective. Now, some people take these moments and run with it and start asking these questions and digging deep, and then some people kind of push it down. I think it just depends on where you are, you know, on your path. But uh, I, I found that really... Uh, refreshing as well to know there are a lot of people having these bigger experiences i i really liked how you you came away with a, a sense of responsibility which obviously led you to to making the film and 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 putting it down in a medium and in a way that is really accessible to people uh you, you, we're used to popping in a dvd and and there's nothing weird about it and and what what could potentially be weird about it you go out and say it's weird and and that was the thing that um uh, uh, we, weirded me out is that you know i used to see people doing things or saying things or seeing things and i'd say well i don't want to be like them right a absolutely well, I mean, there's a real, I, I think what happens when some people have these experiences, they really fall and drink the Kool-Aid. And these experiences really shift your perception, but we're in these bodies for a reason. So I think when people kind of gripe about the New Age movement that's been around, well, you know, they have a lot of things worth saying, a lot of truths there, but you also have to stay grounded. You have to pay your mortgage. You have to pay the electricity, all that sort of stuff. And you know, there was a lot of truths that we heard from various walks of life, and I kind of took what worked for me, and if it didn't, I listened and kind of moved on. You know, it's interesting. I, I um, heard you on Coast to Coast, and um, I didn't know. Uh, I had just turned it on uh, and, and while I was driving, and I, and I really liked what you were saying, and I thought, wow, this this you know, this guy really knows we should have him on the show. And then lo and behold, you end up being the same guy we were working on getting on the show. And I thought there's no coincidence. I, you know, Jonas is in my, in my field. He's in, he's, he's, we're, we're, we're tuning in here together. And, and what's, what's this all mean? And then I shared a little bit of that at, at the beginning of the show, but um, with, uh, without knowing just turning on the radio and listening to you, you sounded like a regular guy. You talked about regular things. It's almost as if you have a you have an advantage that that most people don't. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, I, I certainly wouldn't say an advantage. I mean, I, <laughs> I would say I had an opportunity to go a couple ways with it, and I think the when I quit fighting it is when things kind of got more in alignment for me because. You know, if you see the film, it, it's certainly not a vanity piece. I mean, this is about as raw and brutal and warts and all as I can show myself. So I, I guess the thing that I really try to take away is this kind of guru culture that we have when it comes to these topics that, 
you know, that's just simply got to stop because ultimately we have all the information anyway. So you and I may have a beer later on and you may say something that shifts my perspective or helps me. But the idea that, you know, we have these people we have to put on um, pedestals, you know, I just didn't see it that way. Also with, you know, people that they certainly have these abilities to people that resonate with me that are just very humble and they have this ability, but that's fine. You know, someone else may be great at basketball. It's all kind of the same thing. And learning to be real humble and just see it as an experience is really something I've worked at because early on, and I'll call it spiritual immaturity on my part, you know, seven, eight years ago, I would kind of flip the pendulum back and forth where I would feel special which is very embarrassing for me to even consider now, but that was my maturity level. And then the pendulum would flip the other way, and then I would feel like a victim. And it really took a lot of internal work and a lot of kind of facing this to kind of get somewhere in the middle. You're not special. You're not a victim. It's just an experience, even though it is very <laughs> out of the ordinary. Another thing I thought was interesting is we met, uh, you know, the scientist uh, Dean Radin, and he talked about how the subject matter we're talking about is still very taboo to a lot of people. But he also spoke about how when yoga and meditation came over in the 60s, that was also very taboo. So he works in his field to really try to make this a more common thing. And the things that I've uncovered, I'm sure you have, is that these experiences are a lot more common than one would ever think. It's just just people that are closeted about it because it's still pretty wacky subject matter for, you know, average Joe six pack. (laughs) And, and, Ironically, that's what I was referring to as far as the advantage is concerned is, is, is in the sense that you're a regular person, let's just say, uh, doing your regular thing, yet you have this added, expanded view on things. Um, uh, th- that's what I mean by advantage. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Well, a little bit. I, I just wouldn't call it a, an advantage. I mean, I, I'll tell you this, man. Life was a lot simpler before these things open up because... Right. You know, I, when I screw up or when I'm not doing the right thing, which I won't say is a lot, but, it, you know, I'm human. It happens. I know the bigger picture around that. So right. I know that we're never alone. You know, I'm still human, still trying to work through my stuff. But um, I, I guess I would say I'm a little bit harder on myself than I was seven, eight years ago, not knowing the big or not even thinking about a bigger picture, if that makes sense. Yeah, actually, that does make sense. And then you bring up a really good point. So, um I do feel responsibility if if that makes that comes through, yeah. Oh yeah, it comes through loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't say it again. Um, <laughs> um, but you, you know, like you said, the the mm, the, the housewife who who has this has experiences or or, or has an expanded view. Um, she or like many people uh, up until now have thought that this is something you don't talk about. Then one of the things I like about the film is that you can help open up that conversation even more and say, no, no, actually let's talk about this. Right. Absolutely. It's pretty wild how that happens. I mean, I work, uh, you know, in the film and commercial world and every now and then it'll come up, Oh, you're the guy that did this while I'm filming a Pampers commercial. And, (laughs) <laughs> I can kind of see pretty early on who's really open to it and who's a little nervous or scared to speak about it. You know, so we'll wrap us a job and we'll go out to dinner and I can kind of feel people. It's on the tip of their tongue. It's like, hell, I've got no one to talk about this to. You know, my husband thinks I'm crazy or I can't talk to my coworkers, but they are having that experience or they just have that knowing around it. What's great about the work that you're doing and all these other people that are doing is it's actually building communities where people don't feel like it's such a fringe topic. Which is just kind of funny to me. I mean, this if there is a topic, this is the topic. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, look, we all love football. We love going to movies, and that's great. But, you know, this is kind of a big deal, you know, when you start unearthing these questions. So I, I'm happy to see so many people come forward and really, really want to start asking these questions when it doesn't have to come out of pain and suffering. Because we're all in the foxhole, and we're all suffering. You know, that's the first thing that we start asking about. So it's kind of nice that we don't have to get in that place. You know, actually, it's interesting, and I wanted to talk about that very thing right after the break. And um, but but before we 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 break, I I, I was thinking, um, you are filming a Pampers commercial, and somebody comes up to you, and whether they bring this topic up or not, you get a sense of uh, something is is right or something is wrong. 
um, uh, how does that affect your work? Um, well, it just depends. I mean, the uh, you know, I, I get the bigger picture, or at least I think I get what the bigger picture was trying to show me. So to have this sight being on 24 seven is definitely not something I want. So I learned how to meditate to kind of close it, not close it down, but just tune it down. So it's not that everyone I look at, I see energy or see their homeboys or spirit guides or auras. Sometimes things break through. And as far as the feeling thing, I've always felt that women had that a lot stronger than men. So I'm trying to work on just feeling things because I feel like that's probably the best tool to have. You know, if you shake someone's hand, it feels right or feels wrong. Hmm. You know what I mean? So sometimes yeah. I see stuff. Sometimes I see stuff around people, and sometimes if their energy they're exuding is just so strong, you know, I, I get it. I just try to work really hard at aligning myself with the right people. But you know, you work with some clients that are really uptight or scared or you know fearful before a job goes on. I certainly feel that, and I just try to ground it so that things stay on track. Do you find yourself? Trying to say to people, you know, if you didn't do that or if you didn't say, or, you know, if you didn't feel this way or act that way, y- y- your life would be a lot easier. It, almost unsolicited advice. Do you find yourself wanting to give unsolicited advice? <laughs> uh, that's a great question, actually. Years ago, absolutely. Uh, now, not so much. Um, you know, if you've got something figured out and we're hanging out, and I see it's like, this guy always seems happy. He seems like he's got together. You know, I'm going to be in a place where I ask. Uh, but for strangers, no, not so much because I think a lot of people, myself included, at least at one point, we're really kind of in love with our identities and who we are. So far be it for me to tell someone any different. I, I kind of think that, uh, we all kind of have to learn on our own. Um, so that, that's kind of how I approach it. But as far as friends or family, if they come up to me and ask, I'll certainly give them my opinion, but you know, it's just that my opinion, um, you know, I, I, I don't really, I have a different perspective, but I really don't feel like I know anything more than anyone else. Hmm. Yet you're tapping into like an infinite knowing. Well, yeah, I mean, I know how that sounds and I, I forgive me if it sounds a certain way. I just, I believe at the bottom, you know, in our soul, we all know this information. Right. We all know. You know, if someone's open enough to hear that truth or when they're ready to hear that truth to kind of shift their life, that's one thing. But as far as, well, let me give you this example. So when this opened up, George Bush was our president. And, you know, I'm seeing a bigger perspective. I'm seeing, you know, what I would define as kind of oneness of everything. And I'm hearing this maniac come at the podium and talk about good versus evil, light versus dark, a holy war. Mm. You know, I, I kept thinking, well, if good old George, you could have an experience like this, he would probably change his tune fairly quick. And so I was really invested and want this man's opinion to change. Mm. For mm. me, that's a hell of a burden to kind of carry. Just like you had Mara in the film is my girlfriend. She was skeptical. She's kind of the, uh, what is it, X-Files, Scully Mulder dynamic. <laughs> she didn't really know what to believe. She thought, well, maybe I'm crazy. I mean, she never thought I was making it up. Uh, but she just said no. And Mara kind of has her own reckoning in the film. But early on, it was very important for her to believe me. I mean, it was so important. And now I just, I try not to bring that luggage. You know, if you're open to it, that's great. If not, it's not really my job to try to convince you. And sometimes I'll get people that really want to debate it. And I just, you know, my experience and my truth is just that, just like yours is just that and, and all along the board. So, you know, <laughs> With uh, Wake Up showing up on Oprah, I definitely got a little bit of email from a uh, fundamentalist, you know, really telling me I'm on the road to hell and Buddhist and sage and meditation. That's just the devil playing tricks. And, you know, part of me wants to engage in a real heated debate with it. Then the other part's like, well, you know, we'll all come to our truth at, at some point. And mm. part of me to try to convince someone otherwise. Because, you know, I wouldn't want you to try to convince me otherwise. I try to have respect for people and their path is their path. And certainly if somebody had tried to convince you of this uh, nine or ten years ago before all of this, you, you might, had a, you, you might had a, have had even more resistance. Absolutely. So, yeah, if you and I were friends a decade ago and you were talking about your experiences, you know, judging by our friendship, I may have been open to it, but I certainly would have been skeptical on some level just because it was so foreign and alien to me. Um, so I, I get that as well. And, you know, my mother, you know, in the – wake up the film, I, uh, I tell my parents about it and 
you know, I think it really scared my father. He's never asked one question about it. And really through his lens, it could only be something with Jesus or only something out of Christianity. Mm. It was either Jesus talking to you or you're schizophrenic. That was kind of his viewpoint. And, mm. you know, God bless him, it is what it is. Whereas my mother has really asked lots and lots of questions and really, I think, opened up her mind and, you know, where she's had so much fear around death and what happens to you. I think that these experiences have given her some comfort, but like I said, you know, it, it's just, it's everyone's timetable. I'm just, I think I'm getting smart enough to know that it's not my timetable. It's, it's there. So, mm. well, uh, when we come back, I, I'd, I'd like to get into some of the, some of the things you've come to or that you came to in the film that I, I thought were, um, You've alluded to here already, but let's not give any more away. Let's uh, let's take a break. But what I do want to give is uh, everybody the website where you can uh, learn more about the film and get the film and actually see the film as well. You can always go to lifechangeswithflipo.com to if you if you forget this website um, or if you want to share it with your friends and they can find it there. But the direct direct website is wakeupthefilm.com. That's wake up thefilm.com just as it sounds so we look back uh, forward <laughs> we look back forward there is no time to our guest Jonas Elrod coming back with us right after this there are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations there are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire they all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jump start, an awakening. Someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with our host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows, which include luminaries such as David Wilcock, Mariel Hemingway, Giorgio Sukalos, Marcy Shymoff, and Shadow Stevens on our archive page at our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O dot com. Remember, you can also connect with us via Twitter and Facebook and now in our own community at lifechangesnetwork.com where real people come together to share real life in real time. That's lifechangesnetwork.com. Well, we're back. I am Filippo Voltaggio, and our guest today is uh, Jonas Elrod. I'm looking here at the information. I, I mean, it, it is so fascinating already the kind of... Uh, write-ups this film has gotten that we're talking about that Jonas made called Wake Up. Uh, you can learn more about it at wakeupthefilm.com. When it actually uh, made its theatrical debut in uh, New York City, it was hosted by Sting. In fact, uh, the film has uh, some music by Sting, Radiohead, Brian Eno, uh, Deer Hunter. I mean, the the the... the the soundtrack is great, and it works really well with the film at some poignant times. It really brings the points home and really draws you in even more. Um, it, it, it features some renowned scientists, teachers, and spiritual leaders, and Sufi mystics. I mean, it, 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 kind, of, it kind of goes on in the sense that you, you watch it, and it lingers, and you will probably need to watch it again, just like you'll probably need to listen to this again, because uh, there's just so much here. And and there's so much that we're still not aware of and we're learning. Uh, the film premiered um, on, uh, or debuted on the premiere episode of Oprah Winfrey's own own network on the on the show Super Soul Sunday. And our guest, again, is Jonas Elrod in the film Wake Up. Uh, Jonas, um, just before uh, the break, we said that, um, or I said that you had come to certain things 
um, in the film. I'm sure you've come to a lot more since the film. But <coughs> you came to something really interesting about religion after you had your um, uh, <coughs> your sweat lodge, was it? Or your... Yeah. Uh, yes, I did. <coughs> uh, s- <coughs> I-, I could still talk if you want some more time. <laughs> That'd be great. One second. <laughs> okay. Actually, um, so at the beginning of the show, I talked about some experiences that I've had and how I was reminded of them while watching Jonas go through them in the film. And it's interesting that the film uh, uh, has uh, takes place over a period of time and how he still has, was struggling with it. And it was interesting to realize as I was watching how I was struggling right along with him with my own with my own uh, awakening. So I, I'm really glad we're having this conversation because I am sure that there are people out there, not just the ones that are afraid to talk about this, but are afraid as they are going through this. Uh, themselves and don't have someone to talk to or don't have uh, friends or family that uh, could understand um, uh, much like Jonas who who comes from a God-fearing Southern Christian uh, family and that's the question that I that I have for you now is is uh, about how you were raised and how your family is and yet you came to an understanding about religion all religions that I thought was very powerful I I did that um <clears throat> excuse me, happened after the vision quest. Sorry, I'm fighting quite a cold, so just bear with me for a sec. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're on, and, and, and we knew this could be what it uh, is. And we're glad yeah, you're on. but I, through the vision quest, I uh, was passed on information that, you know, all religions point the same the same way. You know, it, it's not one religion has a line up on another one. It's really the, all the same thing. It may be common sense for some, but for me, it was definitely life changing. And and you had it, it, is this too critical a point in the movie to talk about the the, the vision you had? Well, what what was shown to me was a tent, and all these tents were falling, and kind of what was shared with me that all these tents were religion, and they were crumbling. So I was a little nervous to put this in the film, you know, because we certainly love our beliefs, but um, that's what was shown. However that works out, I have no idea, but anything exclusive when it comes to this, I feel is not in alignment, and that's just my opinion. You know, your dad can't beat up mine. It's all the same thing, and that's, like I said, what was kind of shown to me. Um, So, you know, we'll see where that goes. (laughs) Okay. Well, actually, um, let's do this. Uh, sounds like you could use a, a glass of water and, and a couple more uh, uh, coughs. And why don't we break to a commercial real quick, which we were going to play later. Let's play that now. Let's give you a moment and then we'll come back. How does that sound? Sounds great. Thanks, Tony. Okay, let's do that now. Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes, thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit LifeChangesWithFilippo.com and click on our representation page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at LifeChangesWithFilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. I'm Filippo Voltaggio, and our guest today is Jonas Elrod. We're so glad he's with us. Uh, He has a film out called Wake Up, actually. It's uh, been out a little bit here. It even premiered on the um, OWN Network uh, on Super Soul Sunday. 
you can find out more about the film and actually get it and watch it. It's available on DVD and video on demand at wakeupthefilm.com. That's wakeupthefilm.com. Of course, you can always refer to Life Changes with Filippo for more information. It's lifechangeswithfilippo.com. So, uh, Jonas, uh, we're back. And how are you feeling? I'm better. I uh, <laughs> For the holidays, we spent the week on, in Hawaii. Huh? And I just got back to New York, and it's freezing, and I, I'm a little sick. So thanks for bearing with me. Uh, a little, a little change there in uh, in in weather. Um, do you have a couple more minutes with us? Absolutely. Uh, okay. Well, you know, um, the interesting thing is that you in the film and uh, in talking to you and and knowing you, and I know Dorothy had uh, talked to you as well and gotten to know you a little bit in person, and. Um, you 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 say you're a regular guy. You started out as a regular guy. Throughout the film, you're a regular guy. And at the end of the film, you're a regular guy. And I think this is one of the most profound things about the quote-unquote waking up uh, process is that you don't necessarily... Um, have to start wearing uh, big caftans and and things on your head and crystals and all that stuff and start preaching in the middle of the street. You can continue being the regular guy, only now you do something else too or or add something to it. Or I don't know quite how to say it, but you know what I'm saying? I think you said it great. Absolutely. (laughs) yeah, it's not a club. You know, I think that's what sometimes people get confused with. You don't have to wear white togas and uh, meditate in the middle of Times Square. If that's your thing, cool. But, you know, I I try to be very authentic and sincere when it comes to this stuff. And, uh, you know, the integration part of these experiences, when you talk of your experience and all the experiences we're having, I think that that's a big part of it that sometimes gets left out because, the experience is so wild and, you know, I think you can get really high on these experiences, but really trying to integrate these pieces, I think is what's key. Um, it only took me four or five years running around the country to try to do this, but, uh, you know, I felt lucky enough at the end of the vision quest that something did fall into alignment and I did have some sort of shift in perspective. But, um, for me to run out trying to be a preacher or convince people or wearing togas and crystals, you know, that's just not me. And, and and you are being you, and and that's uh, the only thing you can do. And and I think that's the fear with so many people. It's like, yeah, if I start admitting that I, you know, then they're going to want me to go to those things, or you know, right. Expect, right? Absolutely, that's funny. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can be this guy or this woman, and you know, nothing changed on the outside, but everything's changing on the inside. Which to me, I think is the point. Do you think maybe your father had somewhat of that fear, like my son's going to turn into one of those or something? Or... You know, I, I don't really know, man. I mean, he's he's an interesting guy, and I, I think he has a lot of fear. And, you know, there's part of me that kind of is like, look, there's not going to be a bigger experience that happens to me on this rock. I mean, <laughs> I'm really curious. But, <laughs> You know, so I, I think there's just a lot of fear there because, as you've seen, you know, even with your experience, I mean, there's a lot of mixed emotions with it. Uh, so maybe that's the case, you know. Um, I, I, who knows? Yeah, you know, one of one of the most um, uh, I, I love the part where you're doing that, uh, you know, the thing at the ranch, uh, and, and you you write down something that's meaningful to you, and you stick it up on a. Y'all just have to see the film to know what I'm talking about. But you you stick it up on a fence, and then you have to find what you just wrote after you know from being far away, blindfolded, right? Absolutely. Um, or better yet, shooting an arrow. Um, did you ever end up? Being able to at least hit the target, by the way. I, I never went back. I mean, so some of my redneck cockiness definitely was hurt that I couldn't even <laughs> not alone hit the target, but get the uh, arrow off the bow. But we went to uh, Rathos, Rathos School of Enlightenment. And what they do is teach you how to manipulate energy and work, work with this stuff through different breathing exercises. So one of the things that they had was they would blindfold all the contestants and they would have them shoot archery from a great distance away. Um, hell, I could barely even shoot the arrow period, but (laughs) some of the instructors were definitely hitting targets from a great, uh, length away. You know, I saw it firsthand. So whatever they're teaching, I mean, it certainly works. And another thing they would have was they would blindfold you and hide your car in a huge football field and 
there are people going right up firing their card. You know, me, I'm walking through the mud and I'm, I'm <laughs> bursting out of my breath and all my childhood angst is popping up. And, you know, I get that happen for a reason. But, uh, you know, to say it's interesting would be an understatement. I mean, it was kind of like a real life Harry Potter school that, hell, I had no idea even existed. So it was really amazing that we got to participate in that. And, and that's exactly why I bring it up. And it's interesting that you said childhood issues. It's exactly why I bring it up because it's, 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 Far beyond interesting. If somebody actually is able to hit the target, and in some cases the bullseye, or in a lot of cases evidently, and if people can find their card that they wrote something on um, blindfolded in, in, a, in, a, in a field as big as a football field, that should tell us something, that there is something that the rest of us aren't tapping into. And, and wouldn't we want to? I mean, this is not happenstance come on this is this is real and and it's it's almost as if we should be waking up just to that but but before you comment that the childhood thing if as children we had been told yes you're you're probably really seeing something mommy and daddy can't see him anymore i hope you can maintain that the rest of your life or uh you know in invisible friends kind of things or or hey son daughter y- y- let's hide this in the house you could find it we know you could do it and and let's develop that skill how different we would all be and this world would be different how, if we could and did absolutely i mean you hit the nail on the head i mean my co-director Chloe Crespi was raised that way. So all this stuff wasn't new to her. Really? She was raised this way her entire life. So it's, it's interesting to see how she's grown and how, you know, inner guidance or uh, guidance from spirit has always been part of her life. She's just been conscious of it. Uh, but what happens is some families, I think, it, that they tell the kids, well, this isn't normal or this is weird or I just can't handle what you're saying. Let's get you a bunch of pills so you can act, quote, unquote, more normal. Right. So, but I'm hoping through the work you're doing and we're doing that this won't be such a taboo thing, you know, that more and more people will come out of the closet and we'll, we'll see where it goes. And absolutely, when you talk about having guidance or intuition, I mean, hell, you know, back in the day when you're a hunter-gatherer society and you're looking to gather food, I mean, you relied on this intuition. You know, I think through technology sometimes that's kind of driven us further away from it. But what I think is remarkable that more and more people are having this awareness, these spontaneous awakenings and, you know, really starting their path. Right. And that's one of the things um, that I, I wanted to ask you in the last few minutes we have remaining here. Uh, on, on Coast to Coast, you said this, that more people not only are, but it's almost like they're going to have to or they're going to. It's, it's inevitable. Or You said something to that effect. Do you remember or do you, do you agree? I, I don't know if I said it was inevitable. I, I do know... I just, you know, what I do, I think, well, is pay attention. And I pay attention to patterns and I pay attention to, you know, different subjects that come up. And it seems that more and more people are speaking about this. More and more people are curious. You know, we're we're in a pretty fearful state when it comes to, you know, everyday existence down here. And I think a lot of people are looking for the way out. It's just like these old ways aren't working anymore. You know, show me something real. Show me something bigger. Ultimately, that li- leads us to a higher power, whether you want to call it Buddha or God or Bubba, it doesn't matter. But a lot of people are trying to step out of these boxes that, you know, society has put us in. When you talk about the kid thing, you know, I got that I had pushed all this into my unconscious and just forgot about it. But, you know, a few years ago, I remembered having these type of experiences. Mm. So I I think that um, maybe we're being pushed in a place where more and more people are going to have to step, start stepping up and understand the connection and the bigger picture with all of us. Right, and one of the things uh, in the film that I like too is that you were asking the question, okay, um, how how do I connect with this? And, and, and at the same time, not only connecting, but how do I deal with it now, now that I have it? And so, some answers came, and I, I bet you've gotten more since the film, and one of them, of course, was meditation, right? Absolutely. Uh, for me, that was the biggest thing, you know, and... Judging by who you're asking, you'll you'll get a thousand different answers. But for me, um, I felt fortunate enough to learn about meditation early on, which helped ground these experiences, which helped turn them up and turn them down when appropriate. So, you know, I live in New York, which is a pretty crazy, wild, energetic place. And 
to walk down Times Square with this thing full tilt open with the economy, cr- you know, crash, you know, all the different things we're going through would be a disaster. So meditation helps me, like I said, tune it in and tune it up when appropriate. It's certainly not appropriate 24 hours a day, though. Hmm. You, you know, actually, and, and you just brought to mind something else from the film and something that I've thought about it, and I, I wonder how you deal with this. You, you, you mentioned so many people going through so much of what they are going through. There, there is pain, there is fear, and, and yet you're saying we're not alone and there are energies around us and, 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 and light and angels and, and all that kind of stuff and, and that this isn't reality. But for the people that think it's reality... Uh, who still need to pay the mortgage, like you mentioned early? Um, h- how does one bridge that gap and 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 say, I'm I'm only experiencing an illusion here, but it sure sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a great way to put it. Well, I'm going to put this back on you. When you have that one figured out, when <laughs> I, I try to. I mean, seriously. When this opened up, I realized I was just kind of floating in the air. You know, you, you have to get grounded with this stuff. You have to do all these everyday things. It's just a balancing act from my perspective. And sometimes things will throw you off balance, sometimes not. I mean, where this really comes into play is when Mary and I hit some kind of hiccup in life. You know, something bad kind of happens. We use these tools to help maneuver through it. So I can tell Mara, hey, it's just a dream. Every day it's not real. Well, she's going to punch me in the throat because that's not really an answer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So this reality is what we know. And sometimes we have peaks into a bigger picture, but just kind of keeping some sort of balance with both, I I think is really the key. Uh, But I don't have that down pat. So like I said, if you know, or if you have any callers, I'd love to hear. (laughs) Well, uh, certainly meditation does keep that help keep that in balance for me though. All jokes aside. Well, I, uh, I have a feeling we're, we're going to actually get to meet in person and, uh, uh, and, and, and be having this conversation as we both learn and as we all learn uh, from each other. Because one thing that I've come to, to learn is that n- no one person has all the answers or all the abilities. And I think that's by design so that we can actually communicate and, and, and know that we need each other. Amen. Absolutely. That's really well said. So with that, I, 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 I know you're going to feel better real soon. Uh, God only knows why you created this, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> um, but, uh, thank you for, uh, for, for being with us and thank you for, for being so, so raw and, and, and honest and, um, for sharing your process. Well, man, thank you so much for having me on there. And, um, you know, if anyone wants to check out the film, we're at wakeupthefilm.com. And, you know, thank you for all the hard work you're doing, too. You know, I, I really agree with what you say. Not one person has all the answers, you know, and I really feel it's a community with you owning your truth and me, mine, and, and down the line that's really going to help us lift this up. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. The film is Wake Up, wakeupthefilm.com, and our guest is Jonas Elrod. Feel better. We'll talk soon. Thanks, buddy. Take care. Uh, this has been so much fun, and uh, it, it's it's been fun and hard at the same time. It's been enlightening and encouraging, inspiring, and and, and uh, heart wrenching at times too. I, I I listen to Jonas, and I, I I think of my own experiences, and then I think of so many others, and that my experiences actually uh, have been not only positive, but also easy in so many ways, because I have um, a, a community of friends and, and family even uh, that have uh, supported me in my understandings and in, in my growth. Um, so for, for those who, who don't have that, um, all of this can be fearful and, and, and hard and, and very new. Um, so with that, I say that that is one of the reasons why I feel life changes is here. Um, it's, it's here for all of uh, you, but it's here for all of us too, because as I talked to Jonas today and, and I've had the privilege and pleasure of talking to so many people as they go through their processes, um, I have learned 
and uh, uh, both from from what I believe to be true, and both and also from what I believe not to be true, or at least not to be in my experience, or at least not the way I see it right now, and. And and that discernment, actually, and learning that discernment has been part of the process. Also, learning how to be in this place. You know, who who is Jonas in, in the world? And who would he have been if he had come, uh, or if this had been uh, 2,000 years ago, or 5,000 years ago, or even 1,000 years ago? Would we have called him a prophet? Would we have called him a sage? Or a, a, what, what would we have called him? And And now looking at a saint or, you know, now looking back um, through the eyes of, of what we know today, uh, what were those mystics or saints or prophets? What were they tapping into? What did they know? And what are they try? What were they trying to tell us then? And what can we now get out of what they might have been saying then or what those of us that are here now are saying now? Um, no matter what we call this kind of experience it is here and it is different than what we have been told by many uh but by what society seems to believe or what is um part of our current um uh, civilization uh our mores our um uh, the, the way we do things, uh, our, our day to day living, this is, this is outside of there. And should it be, should it be, should it be inside? Should it be, um, the, the very thing, like Jonas said, should it be the very thing that we talk about more? Is it more important than, as Jonas said, uh, football and, and drinking beer or, and not, again, nothing wrong with any of that. But is this conversation the actual conversation that we really want to be having? And and is, are we letting our fear and our ignorance um, keep us from potentially experiences or a way of life that um, we have no idea how either wonderful or expansive or exciting it could be? And as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's 2012, and I have resolved that I am going to... Uh, allow this expanded view and experiences to um, permeate my life and let's see where uh, the chips fall or uh, maybe more appropriately, let's see where the chips fly. <laughs> and with that, I am Filippo Voltaggio along with our producers, Dorothy Lee Donahue and Mark Lejour and our engineer, Seth Hendricks, it is a happy new year as far as I'm concerned. Looking forward to much more happiness and much more of this year to come. Wishing you all the same and uh, thank you all for being part of this world and part of this show and part of the positive changes that we all wish to see in this world. Have I said enough? I think so. Ciao for now. You have been listening to Life Changes with Filippo with the Master of Change, Filippo Voltaggio. Listen live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the BBS Radio Network and visit us online at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ion Ways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles with Dorothy Lee Donahue. To learn more about them, visit the sponsor page of our website. Once again, join us here next week as we consciously explore and embrace the only constant, life changes. Change, change, change the world.